Welcome back to LeMaster Tech, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to control a liquid crystal display or LCD screen using an Arduino. So for this project, I'm using a 16 pin LCD screen. My particular screen has 16 characters per row and two total rows. You can find these kinds of screens online if you need one just by searching 16 by two LCD. I'll include links to an Arduino starter kit that's really great for building all the projects we've done on the channel so far, but I'll also leave some itemized links if you're only looking for one piece or part used in this project. You can find those in the description below this video as well as the code that you'll be seeing and the wiring schematic for this build. So in addition to the LCD and the Arduino, the only other physical components you'll need for this build are a 10 kilo ohm resistor, a 220 ohm resistor, a potentiometer, a push button, and then of course a lot of jumper wires. You can solder this if you want to make it a permanent build, but I'll be building it on a breadboard. So for this build, start by running 5 volt power and ground from your Arduino to one power rail of your breadboard. Board. Now, jumper 5 volt power to pin two of your LCD, one side of the potentiometer, one side of the push button, and pin 15 of the LCD, but going through your 220 ohm resistor. Now connect ground to LCD pins one, five, and 16, and the second leg of the potentiometer. Also connect ground to the other side of your push button, going through your 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now it's time to do the Arduino digital pin connections. And while you don't have to use the same pins that I use in this build, it's important to understand that when we get to the code portion of this project next, the order does matter. So if you don't use the exact pins as me, make sure you write down what I used and then what you'll be using instead so that when we get to the code, you're able to modify accordingly. I'm gonna start by connecting LCD pin four to Arduino digital pin two, then LCD pin six to Arduino pin three. Now LCD pin 11 to Arduino pin eight, LCD 12 to Arduino nine, LCD 13 to Arduino 10, and LCD 14 to Arduino 11. Again, that order does actually matter for proper control, so make sure to either do it the way I did or write down what you did instead so when we get to the code, you're ready for it. Now I'm gonna connect the ground side of my push button to Arduino pin 13. And lastly, take the third pin of your potentiometer and connect that to LCD pin three, which is going to allow us to control the contrast of our LCD screen. And I know we went through that pretty quick, but again, the wiring schematic will be with the code in the GitHub link in the description of this video. So if you need that, be sure to check that out. And of course, you can let me know in the comments if you have any questions about what you see here. Now let's dive into the code. Start by including the liquid crystal H package. This is a pre-built Arduino module that already knows how to convert text into our six pin control that we want to send to the screen. Next, define a liquid crystal item and pass it the six pins that we used in our physical build. Remember, mine went in order two, three, eight, nine, 10, 11. So if you used different pins than I did, you need to update this line accordingly. Next, define what pin your switch is on. Again, mine is on 13 and then make Make integer values for our current switch state, our previous switch state, and then the reply that we want to have displayed currently. Now in the setup code, which runs once on initial project boot up, so when you power your machine on or first upload the code to it, tell the LCD to begin and then tell it how many rows and columns it's going to have. Next, set the switch pin up as an input and then use your LCD's dot print command to set row zero's initial message. Then move your LCD's cursor down to row one, but column zero. So it goes column then row, so zero one, and then set whatever you want the second row's message to be. Because numbering starts from zero, this is row zero and row one on a two row LCD screen. And that's it for the setup function. Now we need to look at what happens in the loop function, which runs over and over the whole time our Arduino is powered. Let's start every loop by just reading the state of our switch 
switch pin. Then let's put in an if statement to see if our switch pin is different than the previous state of the switch pin, which would tell us that it's either been pressed in or released. Those are the only two times that the switch pin is going to change state. Then add another if statement to check if switch state is low. This means that we'll only change the state of the screen when the push button gets released. Now set up an if else checker to see what state of your reply variable it's in. And if you're less than your maximum number of replies, then just add one to the variable. But if you're at the upper limit, and for my project, I'm gonna do eight total messages. So if I get to the eighth message and I press the button again, I wanna send it back to zero. Now outside of that if else statement, but still inside our when button gets pressed and released code, we're going to start by clearing out the previous message on the LCD with LCD clear. Then set the cursor back to column zero, row zero. And the way I have it set up is that for all of my messages, I'm gonna keep a constant, just Lamaster tech in the top row. So I'm gonna write this outside of the case switching, which we'll do next. But if you want both rows to change, then you'll just take these next three lines of code and stick that inside the case switching that we're about to cover. But so I'm gonna write Lamaster tech to that top row and then I'm gonna move my cursor down to the second row and now it's time to look at switching between every independent message based on the state of our reply variable which we control with that push button. So in C++ a switch case is basically like a huge if else statement where you just say ahead of time what variable you're looking at for your if else's and then it's just um, rather than needing to type in else if this variable is equal to this value, it kind of knows, okay, in the case that my reply variable is a zero, write this, one, write this, two, write this. So in every case, zero through seven, we're going to say case, our number, and then what we want to lcd.print, so whatever line or message we want to say for that number, and then just add break to the end to signify that that case is done and you can go on to writing the next case. And then that's gonna be it for the two if statements, so make sure you have your closed parentheses, closed curly brackets after those. And the last line of code we need in this that needs to run every single loop is set the previous switch state equal to whatever the current switch state is. This is how we'll make sure that we only change once per button press, and we always keep track of whether or not the button has changed states. Then you can just close out the loop section of your code, you're done with the programming, and you're ready to upload this to your Arduino. If all of the wiring was correct and your code is correct, then you should get something that looks a lot like this. So when you boot it up, your initial message should be showing. And as you press that push button, it should start cycling through all of your cases. The potentiometer we added to this build controls the contrast of the LCD screen. So try playing with it and you should be able to dial in a setting that looks pretty good for your application. So obviously there are tons of ways to use this pretty basic build. Let me know in the comments below what your idea for how you wanna incorporate an LCD into your Arduino projects looks like. And so I hope this video was what you were looking for. I hope you found it useful and I hope this channel has been providing a lot of helpful resources as you get into Arduino and home automation. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you found it helpful, consider checking out the Patreon link in the description of this video as well. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, you guys make this channel grow and I am so grateful for you. Thank you everyone for watching, good luck with your projects, I'll see you next time, bye.